Hey guys, so today we have like a compilation of short stories that are too short to do a full video of so we put them all into a video together and there's more so we could do a part two of this but don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you at the end of the video. Make a bear character in D&D 3.5. DM laughs. Make bear a rogue. Put every point I can into disguise. Prestige class as a spy to get more disguise. DM says I can't speak English. Max out bluff. By growling and gesturing, I can fake speaking a language I don't speak. English. Use money to hire a butler NPC. Give him magical item to let him speak bear. Growl! An excellent suggestion, Mr. Barrington. <laughs> we really should ask the group... <laughs> 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 we really should ask the group to investigate the Black Marsh. Over the course of the game, be knighted as Sir Barrington. Queen holds a dinner in my honour. A guest becomes the first man to ever make a perception check that can beat my disguise. Shouts out loud, Hey! That guy's not a guy! He's just a bear! Man is escorted out of the castle while the guards <laughs> apologise profusely for the indignity. We are so sorry, Sir Barrington. Very sorry for this man's behaviour. <laughs> Shrug. <laughs> this thread reminds me of one I saw a while back. Mainly just brainstorming material for making the player sad. Well, the DM in the campaign I'm in apparently also saw that thread. Because something similar to one of the ideas that got thrown around ended up as a quick one-shot encounter that we happened across while travelling between towns. We were approaching a frontier town and ran across a pair of statues by the road. The quality and expressions made it obvious that they were people who had been petrified. A group of similarly equipped people a short distance away confirmed that their party had been attacked by a Medusa and they had lost two of their number before they fought it off. We tracked the Medusa to its lair, an old ruined temple. We found what had obviously been its home, but no Medusa. We also didn't find the collection of people turned statues that we thought we would, which meshed with what the residents of nearby town later told us. They had never even heard of there being a Medusa in those ruins, and had certainly never encountered one. Only the group that we had run into on the road had. What we did find was a large collection of letters. Apparently the Medusa had started writing letters to a man in the nearby town. Fuck me, you talk about getting catfished. <laughs> catfished by a fucking Medusa. <laughs> At first pretending to be a girl who had spurned him, then after a while as they grew closer she admitted who, and even later what, she really was. They eventually agreed to meet. We also find a note, addressed to whoever might find and read it, explaining what had happened. The man had arrived at the ruins at the same time another group was exploring the ruins, investigating rumours of a monster hiding out there, and while the group nosing around in the ruins didn't find her, he did. He startled her, saw her, and turned to stone. The note went on to say that she was leaving the ruins to find some way to cure him. There was one more note after that one. At that point, the DM handed each of us a piece of paper which read, I'm such a fool. Of course a lone woman travelling the high road would look like an appetising target. I got two of them, but I took a bad hit. Even with the supplies in my pack, I don't know if I would make it. And I lost it in the fight. Without it, I won't last the night. At least I'm not alone anymore. I'm such a fool. After a short while longer exploring the ruins, we found a solitary statue of a man, looking startled. The statue had been decorated with wreaths and flowers, and curled up at the statue's feet was a dead Medusa. We went back and found the group from the road. They asked us if we had found the monster. We replied that we had, and proceeded to kill the lot of them. Well... Well... Very sympathetic story yeah, for a monster. Especially for a Medusa. Yeah. Let me tell you about Necromancy TG. I played a Necromancer once, in what I thought was a solo game over IRC. I went around to places where the economy was horrible, the rulers were tyrants, and the people were downtrodden. There, hidden in carns and crypts, I taught. I taught the people how to use the dead in their defence. And when the defence was not needed, in their fields. I taught spellcraft and surgery. I taught them to think for themselves. I overthrew tyrants. I saved civilizations. I left in my wake prosperous, well-fed democracies, populated by the living and the working dead. Eventually, I became old, tired. 
I knew that my lichdom was not far from me. Benefits aside, I was ready to move on. I had mastered this side of death, yet there was so much more to learn that required intimate knowledge of the other side. As I prepared my final resting place, with a massive spell to go out to all my protégés, I used a simple scrying spell to view the places I had visited once more. What I saw surprised and disgusted me. The living once again worked the fields, instead of the schools and libraries. So-called good kings once more had tyranny over the people. Ignorance and fear ruled these lands again, and bodies were cremated, even the bones, and scattered so that no necromancer could use them, for good or for ill. I traced back the lines of fate to find what had caused such disasters. What had destroyed the lands which I had saved? Adventurers, so-called saviours, hunting down the most powerful necromancer in the world. The Arch Lich, they called me. I wasn't even dead. The stories they circulated claimed I had lived a thousand, thousand years, spreading misery and the walking dead in my wake. Misery, most certainly not, and I was scarcely 60 years old. Though my mentor had certainly lived a long time, and his mentor before him, I was not even a lich. Not long after I discovered this, my body failing, one organ at a time, this group of adventurers found me. I lay on my deathbed. They were expecting a fight, some cackling evil mastermind to kill so that they could have been called heroes. They did not expect an old bitter man who had seen his life's work destroyed because of paranoia and bigotry. I told them what I had done and why I had done it. I told them of my hopes and dreams for a world where no living man would have to work, where all could spend time doing what they truly desired. Study, advancement, even the simple pleasures of a small farm and family, if they so wished. A world free of petty tyrants, where each man could vote for the ruler of their town or their nation. In the end, I cried. For my protégés, good men dead at the hands of these heroes. For plans dashed against the rocks of hatred. For myself, an old broken, dying man with a wasted life. As it turns out, my DM was using me as the big bad evil guy for another campaign he was running. And according to him, I succeeded beautifully. That's a really good big bad evil. That is a really good that's, big bad evil guy. I, I, I really like that. Twist on it. Ooh! Yeah, that, that's really cool. And I love whenever DMs do that. Like, you know, they are playing with one people, but then they also apply. Like they the, merge it? Yeah, they merge yeah, I like it, but it without telling you. It's yeah. actually really cool. I've seen that done in a few stories. I love the concept. Yeah. I would love to do it myself, but not for me. I recall a group almost 10 years ago where that guy was a relatively new player to our group and we had agreed the game was going to be about mid high fantasy D&D heroics. So he shows up with his drunken old man light of a fighter. Meanwhile we're all playing young kid of a weeaby anime hero types. Ooh. Mate, are you sure he was that guy? <laughs> <laughs> <And> you <laughs> <laughs> We tolerated him and how often his talk about how drunk, smelly and generally obnoxious his character was. He would use metagame knowledge to make fun of our characters in character, laughing at us when we get knocked out, calling us cards when we failed our fear checks, and the DM would take pity on us and just kind of give us let it slide looks and let us take rerolls. We'd bitch about it between sessions and we sort of grew to hate the guy as a player. His character would go into long diatribes about dungeons and gold and how useless we were and we'd get into our long arguments where the DM would constantly have to remind us to keep it in character. Anyway, this campaign goes on for at least a year and the storyline is kind of climaxing and a DM player character gets kidnapped. So after another argument session we get convinced by that guy to take a suicide mission and storm a castle. And he's basically yelling at us, IRL, we have to do it. So when we agree, he leaves the room with the DM for a few minutes. And we assume this is all some meta plot, how he's going to fuck us over and steal our shit. They come back in as if nothing had happened. Session continues, but we're all on guard, assuming something's up. We storm the castle or whatever, and have a lot of fun. Not really noticing that this guy has stopped being so obnoxious. He hasn't once mentioned how his character reeks of whiskey or onions or whatever. Reeks of onions? Okay. Sounds a bit like basil. <laughs> Onion man. <laughs> Though he wastes a good five minutes explaining how his character shaved his beard. Whatever, we just assumed the DM talked to him about how it was annoying us. Epic battle ensues and fast forward to face off with the big bad evil guy. 
some lich thing and the fight isn't going so well. We're getting spanked. Our cleric is down and Mr. Fighter has a haste and out of nowhere he goes, I rush to Cedric, the cleric, and slap him. Get up, you card! And at this point, I groan, but the DM is like, Cedric, you're back up with XXHP. Then Mr. Fighter goes, I turn to the lich and I smite him. And suddenly it clicked for all of us. Oh, he's... he's oh, Fucker had been playing a paladin the entire time. His insults were his lay on hands and calling us out his cards were his anti-fear aura. He wasn't that guy. We were that guy. And we'd just been absolutely out role played for almost a year. That's going what the fuck? That's going to I really like that. I, I love the idea of him like being like a paladin. That's good. I really like go, that. Like going into like redemption arc yeah. almost. I think that's really cool. I like that. that. That's particularly cool. I would love to do something like that. Grip is having a party for cleaning a goblin cave that's been annoying the village. Saved the Lord's daughter. Big bad evil guy shows up, says he has come to claim his virgin wife so that he may perform a ritual to summon a demon. Obviously refused to hand the girl over. Fight breaks out. Bard grabs the girl and runs away. So just as the girl whilst the rest of the group tries to fight the big bad evil guy and we're failing, has sex (laughs) with a girl. No longer a virgin. DM is furious. Angry that we completely destroyed his plot. Does the DM have the right to be angry that we poked a hole in the plot to beat the big bad evil guy? Well, it, well, there's it, no more virgin girl to take, I so... Suppose, it's never clarified what each of the daughter is, so, you yeah. know, it's not... It sounds sketchy on the surface level, but, like, you know... <laughs> it's for a good cause, you know? Be concubine character. High bluff, but very basic combat skills and nothing for utility. Supposed to be high level campaign, but I'm adamant this is who I want to go with. Have to be carried through every fight, basically. Party... Thoroughly annoyed. Finally make it to the Dark Lord's fortress. Betray party and announce I love the Dark Lord and will do anything for him. Party locked in dungeon while Dark Lord and me have wedding ceremony. We retire to his chambers to consummate. At this point, party telling me and DM to stop. This is fucking stupid. And they just want to D&D not bear witness to your ER... ERP? What the fuck's ERP? Look it up. Oh, erotic rope! Uh, That's why I don't know it. (laughs) The Dark Lord turns his back on us and I reveal myself. Concubine opens her legs an epic level halfling rogue slides out of her ass. (laughs) This was my true character all along. (laughs) I've been rolling to stay hidden up her ass the entire campaign to get close enough to the Dark Lord to assassinate him. Concubine is just a hired NPC that Dame agreed probably had an anal circumference of more than two inches and was willing to let it slide. Mate, is, is her asshole literally a bag of holding? Fucking ass One last roll. With his legendary armour removed and his back turned, he never sees me coming. Shit up there like a flash before he even knows what's happening. Destroyed him from the inside like a whirling dervish. Free party from dungeons and clean up the rest of his minions. Entire grip is speechless. And that was how I saved the land. Okay. <laughs> now, I have to say, anytime I hear the story of Sir Barrington, I just can't help but laugh. <laughs> I think it's the funniest no! thing. I think it's the funniest thing ever. It was like, what was that one we did the other day? The one about the character creation and the fellow who was an orc logue and he couldn't stealth and he just used intimidate instead yeah. and he goes you can't see me <laughs> you know it's kind of like that uh, also i really enjoyed that one about the necromancer i love that that was a really that's a really good example of how to do a good big bad evil guy you don't want him to be like you know that saturday morning cartoon with a twirl of mustache <laughs> you know you want a, a, a good sympathetic villain yeah. that you can actually understand the motives and why they're doing it yeah. i think it's actually a really good cool way to do it anyway but like i think we've kept you guys long enough if you guys have got any like we short maybe one-off stories maybe write them down below if we get enough of them we might be able to do a wee video on them i think it'd be pretty cool mm-hmm. and uh we'll see you in the next video bye all those moments will be lost in time